I'm ready. I don't think I'm up to going to the bookstore today. Are you sick? Yeah, I'm sick. Well, what is it, Jill? Your, your head or, or your stomach? I noticed that you left the party early last night. Is that when it started? Yeah, that's when it started, all right. Well, you don't feel warm. What is it, Joe? It's me. Everything about me is wrong. Ask Peter Davidson. He'll tell you. Did you and Peter quarrel last night? Hardly. Well, Jill, something must have happened for you to be acting this way. I asked Peter if he thought I looked nice last night. And he didn't think so. Well, he was wrong, Jill. No, he liked the way I look. He just doesn't like me. You mean, other than a friend? Yeah. Jill, when you put on that dress last night, and you turned and looked in the mirror, what was your very first reaction? <laughs> Who is that girl? <laughs> and then what? Not too shabby. And you saw how everyone reacted when you walked in that front door. Yeah. Just for a second, I thought I knew what it was like to be beautiful. It was a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. oh, listen to me acting as if it's important or something. I just proved that I can play that game like everybody else. <sighs> well, you know what? Who cares? You do. Why should I? I never did before. Well, maybe you never had a good reason before. I had plenty of reasons, plenty of guys. I just made them accept me the way I was or forget it. Well, did any of them ever tell you what you needed to hear or treat you the way you needed to be treated? No. But maybe that's not what I was looking for. I think that's all you were looking for. Jill. I think you're taking the wrong approach. I, I don't think it is a game. And if it's what you want, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Is it worth all of it, Mrs. Cummings? Yes. It isn't easy. But through trial and error, you're going to find the real Jill Hansen. I don't think any guy's worth all that. Maybe not. But it's not for them. It's for you. And you are worth it. And someday, someone's going to come up to you, and you're going to see that special sparkle in their eye. And you're going to know that he loves you just because you're you. And believe me, there's no other feeling like it. It sounds like the movies. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But I'll tell you a secret. I haven't seen a movie yet that tells you just how beautiful it is. In case I haven't before, I want to thank you for a lovely party last night. You did. Three times. Well, I guess nobody ever accused me of not being repetitive. <laughs> oh, please sit down. Oh. What time did everybody finally go home last night? Uh, before 12. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, Peter and Jill had a bit of a misunderstanding last night. Oh. Well, it seems that Jill wants their friendship to be something more than Peter does. Well, did he ever give her any indications that he wanted more? I don't think so. You have to be very careful about that. Yes, you do. Yes, uh, poor Jill. It's rough when you like somebody and they don't respond. I guess... You should never assume how somebody feels. It was nice about Mitch and Millie getting married. Yeah, it? wasn't that a nice surprise? Well, they didn't date very long, did they? Just a few months. Well, that just goes to show you, if you're sure about something, why hesitate? If you're sure. Well, I guess that's one of the nice things about getting old. You're more sure of yourself. That's funny. I, I always thought it was just the opposite. I, as I get older, I... I find that I have more options, and it's harder for me to make up my mind. Maybe. But how do you know what you want unless you try some of those options? Right? Maybe. Would now be a bad time to remind you that you promised me a dinner date? Well, it depends. When? Tonight. 
Oh, tonight's bad. I have to complete a report. Tomorrow night. Fine. <laughs> great, great. Look, I'll look you up later and we can work out the details then. Have you seen my other shoe? What? Something's blue? I said, have you seen my other shoe? How should I know where it is? Do you want some peanut butter on your toast? No, I don't even want any toast. What? Roast? I don't have time for toast. Sorry, you're going to have to settle for toast. Lori, where is my shoe? Where are your sneakers? Oh, very funny. Alex is probably pulling out his hair by now, wondering where I am, and you're making jokes. Relax, have a piece of toast. Would you stop with the toast already? Oh, boy, round started ten minutes ago. Listen, do me a favor. The second I'm out the door, call the hospital, tell them I'm on my way. Where is my shoe? Wear your loafers instead. I guess I don't have much choice. You know, at the rate you're going, you're going to get into an accident on the way to work today. Lori, where are my loafers? In the closet. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Oh, yeah. Yes, they are. Sorry. I told you so. Oh, boy, mornings like this, I feel like I'm married to Lucy. At mm. least have a cup of coffee. Uh, no, I don't have time. Uh, what have you got planned for today? I thought I'd look at my diploma. Well, that sounds like fun. Then I thought I'd put it together with my rejection notices in a scrapbook. Um, Laura, have you seen that other medical book that came the other day? Which one? The one with the uh, article about the new laparoscopic surgical techniques. Oh, that one. Why didn't you say so? Uh, I thought it was here. Well, it had a recipe for taco salad on the back, so I cut it out. <laughs> what? Now, come on, sweetheart. You know there's a job out there for you somewhere. Do I? Sure you do. Prove it. Well, I don't have to. I mean, everything about our life is proof that God's taking care of us. Now, you've got three seconds to smile and agree with me. I agree with you. Well, I know you really mean it. Come on, um, look on this as a vacation. I mean, you certainly deserve one after that push to graduate on time. Uh, time's up. Mm, I love you. Uh, don't forget to call them. Hi. Love you, too. Ricky. <laughs> Jason, I still say you could push harder. If we finished even three or four weeks ahead of schedule, think of the potential savings. I know, but is it worth endangering the lives of my men by putting them under that kind of pressure? Oh, come on now. I think they can handle it. They, they're the best crew in the state, uh, if boasting has meant anything all these weeks. Well, I know they are, and I want to keep them that way. I'm very proud of them, and I'm very proud of the safety record. Look, when you start a push like that, you don't get people at their best, and besides, it's bad for construction. I have every confidence they would maintain your standards. Well, thank you very much, but that's a risk I'd just as soon not take. Look, Charles, we're right on schedule, and we're right within budget. And I can promise you that barring any unforeseen circumstances, we'll keep it that way. Now, I think that's very fair. Well, I think something that would be even fairer is you exploring ways in which our costs can come down a bit more. When I gave my bid to you, I, in effect, made a promise to you. Now, there was nothing hidden or concealed about it. Now, I'm sticking to that bargain, and I wish that you would. Yes, well... Vince Cardello had more to say about that than I did. And that's put a strain on our relationship. I'd like to resolve it. Say, that's quite good. Who did it? Thank you. My daughter, Mary Ann. She's very talented. Yeah, she's got a bright future ahead of her. I wish as much could be said for my daughter. Oh, problems? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing, really. Nothing she can't handle. Just a short stay in the hospital to take care of a very minor ailment that's all oh well then i'll pray for a speedy recovery oh no 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 there's no need for that she's just about ready to be released oh well my praying for wouldn't bother you would it uh no no not at all if it makes you feel good uh but let's just keep it that way shall we well what do you mean well uh i can't stop you from believing what you do just don't force it on me oh, you have to worry about that charles that's not my style fine Come on in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were busy. I'll wait outside. No, 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 no. I was just leaving. Uh, Jason, I'm going to look these figures over very carefully, and I'll give you some suggestions on how to cut costs. Can't stop you, I guess. No, you can't. <laughs> Mrs. Davidson, 
I'd appreciate it if you would not visit my daughter. She's in a hospital, not a Sunday school. I'm certainly glad to see my little bouquet hasn't gone unnoticed. Oh, Daddy! Hi. Why don't you look better? Thank you. I feel much better, too. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> oh, and Daddy, you know what? I just had the best session with my psychiatrist this morning. <laughs> well, we're certainly not going to need him much longer. After all, you are a carpenter. Well, I don't know. I did ask Dr. Fellman how I was doing, and he said that I was better, but that it would be a long road to recovery. Not uh, for my little girl, won't be. <laughs> well, Daddy, I enjoy talking with him, and do you know what? I've really learned a lot about myself. Oh, well, I think this is getting a little personal, don't you? Uh, maybe we should talk about it some other time. No, no, I don't mind at all. In fact, he has really encouraged me to try to be really open about it. Well, I don't think that's very wise. After all, that's, uh, that's all over and done with now. Do you know that you do that a lot? What? Try to put off talking about things. And I know because I do it too, but you see, it's not good. Uh, well, but I just don't see any sense in dwelling on something that uh, doesn't make any difference no, now. Daddy, Daddy, that, that's all wrong. You see, it's only by exploring the past that we really learn to understand the present. But oh, wait a minute, Daddy, there, there's something else that's been puzzling me. Now, I, I don't mean to blame you or anything for what's happened to me, because I'm realizing that it's mostly my fault, but I, I've been wondering if you didn't start to notice a change in me. Well, of course I did, and I was very concerned. So why, then, didn't you ever try to help me? But I did. I sent Nancy to take care of you. Oh, yes. Miriam, you don't think that I really abandon you, do you? Oh, no, no. Oh, ma'am. No, no, I don't, Daddy. Uh, it's just that... Well, you see, I haven't really talked this out with Dr. Feldman yet, so... Um, well, uh, but it's this idea that just keeps occurring to me that when I really needed you the most, you know, after my divorce and when Mother left us, then you just left me all alone. You, you know, you fired me, and then you left the house. And somehow I just keep thinking that maybe that wasn't fair. But, Mim, I did that for your own good. No, but see, it didn't work. And then you never came back. I'm sorry. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm just trying to figure this all out. But something else occurred to me that... Since I've been here in the hospital, Nancy's only come to see me once. Do you know why that is? I mean, you, you come to visit me, but I can tell it makes you very uncomfortable. Mim, you know what I think of hospitals. Yes. Well, I think it's just odd, isn't it, that uh, the people that really make me feel the best are the Davidsons, and here the, they're the ones I thought hated me, but they just keep coming here to talk to me. And... Mm. Yes, I know. Well, you know, they have really treated me well, and look, in fact, they gave me a Bible. I don't know, I wonder why they are so nice to me, but I think maybe I'll just have to speak to Dr. Feldman about that, too. <laughs> All right, end of the line, everybody out. No, no, please don't let me go back to work. What do you think we were doing at lunch? Well, it didn't seem like work. Oh, we finished everything we were supposed to. We did? Yep. Well, I'd say we're a pretty good team, then. Yeah, I've had less pleasant business associates. Well, I hope it continues to be pleasant. Well, I'm sure it will. Alex! Terry. Jason. Alex, good to see you again. Well, you two are uh, becoming quite a twosome. Better be careful. You know how the hospital grapevine is. Ah, nothing. Looks like things have been pretty uneventful around here this afternoon. Yes, they have. Uh, here, anyway. Good. About tomorrow night. Would 7.30 be okay? Fine. Good. Well, I have to uh, pick up something at the lab. Yeah, I gotta be running, too. I'll keep you company partway. Well, I was uh, gonna take the stairs. Well, that's great. I need the exercise. Check with you later. Oh, thanks for lunch. Oh, pleasure. Alex, let me ask you. Do they ever give you people around here anything like a normal working day? Don't 
don't you have anything better to do than just stand around? Hi, sweetheart. You should talk. You're the lady of leisure now. Don't remind me. Well, enjoy it while you can, because you'll be busy soon enough. You sound just like Ben. Where is he? I'm meeting him later. Right now, I'm here to see Miriam. Ran into Charles Carpenter this morning. He asked us to stay away from her. Oh, so that's what was bothering him. I passed him in the lobby on the way in, and he gave me one of those looks of his. Apparently, we're undesirable. No comment. <laughs> Should I not go in to see her then? I think Miriam's capable of making that decision herself. Ask her. You're right. Come in. Hi. Oh. Would you like some company? Yes, that's fine. I was just thinking about you. Oh? Yeah, Daddy was here a little bit earlier, and he's not too happy that you and your mother visit me all the time. Mm, I've heard. I wanted to talk to you about that. How do you feel about us visiting? Well, I enjoy your visits. You know. We really don't want to do anything to upset you or your family. Well, it's just that Daddy doesn't trust you, you know? No, I imagine he doesn't. Well, Daddy gets upset very easily, but... That's really no concern of his because, you know, if I enjoy your company, that's my business, not his. You're sounding very independent all of a sudden. Yeah, I am, aren't <laughs> I? Well, maybe that's because I'm starting to know a little bit more about myself. Like what? Well, I'm still confused about things, but, but things aren't always what they seem to be. Like Nancy, uh, she always said that she was my friend. But she doesn't act like it. And you... You're just about friendlier than anybody else, and I didn't even like you before. Things have a funny way of working out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Your mother and you, you pray a lot, don't you? Yes. Do you ever pray for me? Many times. Yeah, I thought so. Um, there's something that I'd like to know. I, I don't know why you bother. I mean, what am I to you? Well, in the first place, you're someone who God loves very much. And I suppose I could, could say I bother because he's commanded us to love one another. But even if he didn't, I'd still care. Why? Because I've seen the pain you've been through, and I want to help. And you think that God has really heard your prayers? Well, you're getting better. And although some people wouldn't, I give God the credit for that. Well, I don't know. It just seems really hard to believe that there is such a thing as God, you know? It can be. But he's there. And he knows who you are. And he loves you very much. Even with all the really bad things I've done, and even though I, I've never believed in him, even in spite of all that, Well, I thought the party was a great success. Thank you. I'm going to have to do it more often because I enjoy the compliments I get afterwards. Mm -hmm. There you are. You are aware, of course, that we were supposed to meet in your office. I'm sorry. Were you waiting long? No. I didn't even bother to see if you were there. I knew you'd forget. Well, I knew you'd know that I'd forget, so I came down here. That means you really remembered. Uh, not really. I remembered when I got down here, and I was going to go back up there, but I forgot. Stop! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? You're both here now. <laughs> That's true. How'd it go with Miriam? Very interesting. She asked a lot of questions about the Lord. Really? Now, you see, if you would have been working, you wouldn't have been there to answer them. Now you sound like Mom. I think Miriam's ready to make a commitment. Wonderful. Doesn't anyone work in this place? Uh-oh, I was supposed to be in Lester's office right about now. Well, don't try the main elevator and stuff. Oh, okay, with any luck, he'll be in it. Bye-bye. Needless to say, that's the reason why I'm late. Laurie? Gil, were you two supposed to have a meeting? I'm sorry, honey, I forgot. Um, it's just to go over plans for the clinic. Um, stick around. Yeah, I think you'll be interested. No, I, I think I'd just be in the way. Laurie, you really wouldn't. Uh, please excuse me. You'll be home for dinner, right? Right. See you then.
Isn't it nice to be able to go to bed at night and know there's enough money in the bank to pay the bills? You mean up until now there hasn't been? Afraid not. Now he tells me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jill's doing better. You know, if someone offered me a million dollars to go back and be a teenager again, I'd say no. A million? <laughs> a million. I wonder if the Lord is uh, going to allow us to have some peace and quiet for a while. Ah, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First thing in the morning, I'm going to have that thing taken out and the phone disconnected. <laughs> Mr. Cummings, please help me.